I believe in a thing called love from the darkness kicking off the third and final hour of this week's stage and screen show. Right, where can you take your gal this week? What's the bus? Tell me what's happening. 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 Okay, here we go. Um, now, things at Theatre Cluid are moving at a pace. The play that goes wrong, the fantastic play that goes wrong, closes this evening. There's actually two productions today. But I think you're a bit late for the matinee, do you know what I mean? Kicked off at half past two, so uh, I don't think you're going to make that one if you're not going. But there is a production this evening, kicks off at half past seven. If you want to go see that, you better get your shoes on. And on Tuesday of next week, the mighty Blood Brothers comes to town. Blood Brothers is in uh, is in Theatre Cluid from the 3rd until Saturday, the 7th of May. And also as well, this week on Wednesday, the 4th of May, we are going to be Tret, I tell you, Tret... To a brand new piece called Love by award-winning playwright James Fritz. And that's coming up to Theatre Cluid on Wednesday for one night only and stars the fantastic Casey Ainsworth. Casey Ainsworth is uh, uh, an English actress, best known, I suppose, for playing the roles of Little Mo in BBC soap opera EastEnders and uh, currently playing Kathy Keating in ITV's drama Grantchester. And I am so pleased to say that she joins me on the line now. And Casey, um, over the pandemic, everybody was finding it really difficult to work, but uh, you managed to uh, you managed to keep going, right? Yeah, I wasn't I, I wasn't too bad. Um, I did um, one of the first kind of filming jobs in terms, so I could go back to work. Um, uh, the ITV, uh, you know got up in in production um and i filmed grantchester back to back for um 80 months really um so uh, in terms of work it wasn't too bad um but it was just a very bizarre way of working you know lots of social distancing and all of the other things to keep everybody safe and we actually on grantchester none of the crew got uh covid at all so all of our um protocols worked so um yeah for me it's kind of been like working in a 1950s bubble really <laughs> that's what i've been doing for the last 18 months it was very 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 strange and i've spoken to a few actors that worked were, were lucky enough to work throughout the uh the pandemic which uh in a way is almost a, almost a miracle really but uh yeah. is it is it um is is life on the road uh doing a play like lava is that is it uh is that much stranger than it used to be um, is that again? It's 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 one of those things where you know we we just test every couple of days and but we can't you know we've got audiences coming in um, and obviously we can't social distance on stage um, and the, the great thing about Lava was is that this was meant to be rehearsing before the pandemic. I mean, the, the I think we were meant to start on the twenty third of March and we went into lockdown on the twenty first of March. <laughs> so the the great thing about doing Lava is is that it's been a full circle. So we've all been able to come back um, and put this production on um, and put it on for a bit longer as well and it's had a few more revisions um, to the script so actually people have been working kind of all throughout to 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 get this back on again to get the money to get it back on um, and so we're really really happy that we've done a really long run in London and now we're doing some beautiful dates in and around the country so people can get to see it. Fantastic and you come to uh, Theatre Cluid on May yes. the 4th that's uh, next Wednesday. Uh, have you been to Theatre yep. Cluid before? Have you played there before? I have been. I have never played there before. I'm really excited about playing there because I've never played there before, but I have seen stuff on there. Um, I, I always love the drive up to Cluid. It's just magical. And uh, my grandfather's Welsh, so I feel there's a little bit of me there. Um, and I'm really excited to be coming to Cluid. I've always, always wanted to be there. Um, it, it, there's certain theatres when you're an actor, and I've been working for a long, long time since I was eight. Um, but there's certain places that you that you want, you want to play. And we're really lucky on this tour because I'm, I'm ticking off quite a few on, on, the, on the list, which is great. Yeah. 
It's funny you mentioned the, the drive up because, uh, I mean, I've grown up here all my life, but I, <clears> lived, I lived in London for 12 years and every time we drove home, uh, there's a certain bit where you see all the mountains and you think, yes. ooh, it's, actually, it's actually quite nice around here. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. It's magical. It really is magical driving up there. I mean, I think I probably might have driven up in a bit of fog and mist, so I, <laughs> I added a bit of drama to it. But um, it was, it is a beautiful, it's a beautiful uh, drive up there. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to Excellent. to. to Getting up there on Tuesday. Wonderful, wonderful. And um, as I say, it's it, it's it's a place called Lava. We'll talk about that in a moment, if that's all right. Because your sure. your your career has been uh, it's been quite extensive, really. Predominantly roles on some of the best known TV shows in Britain. And you left uh, you left drama school in 1994, the same time as I did. Yeah. Strangely, right, right. And um, on on that point, do you, do you think um, do you think drama school is still as important as it always was? Um, I don't know. I think it depends. Um, I really love the experience of doing it and to do it, get, getting to do it every day um, and getting to work with, you know, lots of people who are like-minded like myself. I don't think it's an absolute necessary thing to do. And also it's very expensive. Yeah. So it's prohibitive to some people to go to drama school now. Um, but there's... the. The thing that I that I that always worries me about drama schools more than anything else is is there's lots of them around and not a lot of them um, have the necessary contacts for when you're leaving. So uh, you know, for me, I I would always think about if I was if I was thinking about going to drama school now, um, I would want to go to one that had that had people went to watch final shows of um, and that actually had people who were in the industry teaching there and i think that's really important you know working actors and directors and that kind of thing yeah. so um but yeah I, I i loved my experience at central it was brilliant um and at last night two of my my ex-central friends came to came to see the show in london which was, was brilliant um so it, you you do form a special bond with people who you go to drama school with but i'm sure it's the same as you go to university so yeah yeah definitely uh friend, friends for life it's always uh, it's it's friends for life. And when when I when I first left, I went I went to Guildhall when you went to Central. Oh, did you? And that that's yeah. they're they're both as you as you've just pointed out that they're, they're both we're kind of we're kind of lucky to have um, experienced that because brilliant drama schools, yes. Yeah, um, and when I first left, I I went my first job was at the Royal Court in London, um, mm. and I've just been listening to uh, to you speak to somebody about. Uh, Doing workshops at the at the at the Royal Court, which is again something that I did, and I really enjoyed it as well. Um, we we must have met at some point because well, I uh, that. one of one of my first jobs was at the at the court as well. Um, I did a Joe Pennell play um, with Ray Winston called Pale Horse, and it was one of yeah, it was one of my first jobs. I think that was like ninety five or something. But the way I the, but the way I kind of came to the noticed was doing workshops and i thought they were i love and i i still love working on new plays which is obviously why i'm doing lava but um i i love that whole experience of getting something that's never been put on before and being able to um you know, mold it and and create something that is just completely unique to that to that particular performance and that particular play at yeah. that time yeah. and it's it's brilliant i i loved doing workshops i still do yeah yeah definitely Funny you should say Ray Winston, because um, when I was in rehearsals at the Royal Court, I bumped into him on the stairs, and uh -huh. and I only knew him from Scum then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we were we were playing then, so we would have been on yeah. then in Pale Horse when you were doing re your rehearsals. What did you do there? What I did a play job? called The Knocky. It was um, it was for the Young Writers, um, the Young Writers Festival. They had. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It was that. Yeah, I, yeah, I remember I did I did those as well um, at the Young Writers Festivals. They're brilliant, really good, and again another lovely way to to have new new voices come into the theatre. You know, that wouldn't necessarily people who wouldn't necessarily write plays, um, and then they help them develop things um, and getting people young to say you can be a playwright, you can write a play. Yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. And as I say, arguably you've uh, you've you've appeared in some of the biggest shows the UK has to offer. Call the Midwife, Touch of Frost, Midsummer Murders, EastEnders, of course, and uh, mm -hmm. Grantchester, which you've uh, which you've just mentioned, and you're still appearing in as uh, Kathy Kathy Keaton. L life, I've always thought, just pointing on EastEnders, I've always thought that an actor's life is rather strange because one minute you're a a, a job in actor, so to speak, and the next minute you're one of the best known faces on TV with a storyline being discussed on chat shows and the news. It must be very, mm. very bizarre. Yeah, I think when you when you do standards, it is like a juggernaut. So you don't you don't really get to 
do much outside of it and so you are you are in that kind of warford bubble so you don't really notice it until you leave um and that or at or or you're or you're le- or you're leaving and you kind of go wow I, you know, yeah, all of that stuff that I did. Um, so I've kind of thought about it in retrospect. I never used to watch myself either. Um, and now I think it's coming back on classic EastEnders is coming back on one of the one of the channels. And I think the Slater sisters are about to arrive. So it will be quite interesting to see um, to to watch a few of them and see how how we developed over the time. Um, but yeah, it was it, it was it's a crazy time, and you you do spend you are instantly recognizable like the back of your head is instantly recognizable when people shout at you in the street people come and hug you people um you know you know they 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 kind of get in between you know you and your friends if you're in a pub and so sometimes it can it, it did become quite intrusive at, at points um but i always really loved the work and i always thought it was a really important story that we were telling um and you know uh, and i know that alex felt the same um and so yeah it was a it was a it was an experience <laughs> that's all i can that's the way i can sum it up is it was a very mad experience yeah I mean, for, for for anybody that you know been living on the moon and they don't know what we're talking about, you played little Mo. She was in a in a in a, a really abusive relationship, um, but then you suddenly bego- become from being an actor to almost uh, being a spokesperson in a way for for people in those kind of situations. Is there a pressure to really understand what you're dealing with? Yes, there is. I mean. We we did get lots of help, um, you know. They would, you know, because we got sack sack loads. And when I say sack loads of mail, um, it was just huge amounts of people and a lot of those were people who were writing in and saying that they they were they had been or they were in the same situation and you can't kind of take that all on board really um so we had i had a lot of help from refuge um and i was able to kind of pass things pass things on to them um i mean well i had to employ someone in the end to to do all of the post um because i just couldn't i just couldn't cope with it um and so refuge that were then my my next place um and i could hand things over to them but the the interesting thing about that particular storyline was it wasn't just about it was i wasn't just getting posts from uh from people who um were in abusive relationships i was getting posts from children uh people who were being bullied at school because they did identify with her as a character and it was one of the things that i one of the things I didn't want to happen to her was that that she changed. I wanted her to stay exactly the same. I didn't want her suddenly to be someone who um, became feisty or, um, you know, um, was was very different yeah. in herself um, because there was that she didn't need to change. The situation she was in needed to change, and the person that she was with needed to. She needed not to be with them anymore, and I think that is. Um, that for me was really integral because a lot of people just identified with her. They said, "Look, I'm I'm shy. I'm quiet. Um, I'm not the sort of person who is life and soul of the party, um, and I don't see why I need to be." And so they they liked her for lots of different reasons, and some of them were the fact that she was always herself. She didn't she didn't try and be like her sisters or get a makeover or something awful like that. <laughs> yeah. She just she she had she had a kernel of herself always, um, and didn't apologise for that. To win Best Actress uh, o- o- over four different uh, um, uh, award ceremonies, that's uh, it's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, it was great. Yeah, it's always nice. And we won the BAFTA as well um, at that, that year. And that was a, the BAFTA episode was a, was a, I think it was a two-hander between Alex and I. So it was really, it was, there was a lot of accolades for the whole team, um, which is, you know, the important thing is, is that, you know, you've got everyone, you've got the executive producer and then everybody who writes and, and develops that character. And, you know, so there's a whole group of people who are involved in that. And I know that we were all and still are all really proud of that storyline. The people are talking about it. And it was, you know, two, it was, you know, 16, 17 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, head, let, let's jump forward to present day. Lava. It's um, it's a it's a, it's another award winning uh, playwright, uh, James Fritz. Yes. Uh, yes. Tell us about it. What's going on? So it's it's quite a difficult one to describe because there's lots of things that I can't say because it would give away wonderful parts of the story that are brilliant and make people gasp. So. Um, so what I can say is, is that, uh, 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 and this was written before COVID, 
so you know james must have had some kind of crystal ball somewhere <laughs> um because a an asteroid hits london so a catastrophic event happens in london um and wipes out lots of people so it was an in, it's an instant um and unforeseeable thing that happens um and it, it wipes out a lot a lot of people and there's a lot of collateral damage and there's a boy in um in in the north who stops speaking and it's about a correlation between is it a correlation between those two events or isn't it and it's brilliantly played by i've got three fantastically talented young actors in the in the cast i've got bethany antonio dan parr and ollie higginson and um they are just stunning um in in the piece and it's funny it's really funny um we are getting you know rounds of applause and um, people standing up at the end it's short which i like in a play personally <laughs> <laughs> i don't you know i i'm, I'm not really a three act three act play person no. um so you you know you come along you get really entertained it's a thought-provoking play um you know we have had people say to us you know i can't stop thinking about it and these are people in the industry um saying i can't stop thinking about that play um and it's thought-provoking it's short and you get to have a nice drink afterwards and a chat about about the various themes that have been brought up um uh, in the show and it it is it is a really beautiful piece and it has so many it chimes so with so much of what we've all just been through you know a catastrophic event where people lost their lives and you know now we all we all feel um like well did the, that that happened that just happened and everything shut down and all of the things that happened uh, around covid and so it has it has echoes of what we've all been through anyway so it's kind of it's really timely um it's a timely play and it's it's just been very well received we're really we didn't know how it would be received but um because you james really painted himself in a corner by having his main character as non-verbal um but you know in a world where you know all, communication it, it, we were bombarded with it continuously bombarded with communication and people talking at you uh, and all of that it's really interesting to see how much of dan uh, dan's performance that the audience are with even though he doesn't speak well it's funny you should say that uh, james had a, had a crystal ball because um i actually said to people during during the pandemic that if it, it got that bizarre that um, if if Boris Johnson came on the TV and said, you know, aliens have landed in London, I don't think anybody, yeah. I think we would have kind of gone, you know, you might have raised an eyelid, but we wouldn't have been that surprised. It got that weird. Um, yes, exactly. Exactly. So people can relate to this on so many different levels. Um, so actually, I think it's great that we're putting it on now. Um, and yeah, like I said, it's funny, it's entertaining and it's short. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me just ask you about that before we finish because there seems to be uh, a new trend of that there seems to be a lot of 90 minute no interval plays going on i i like you i love that <laughs> i like to go I out and have a drink tell a story. <laughs> yeah you can tell a story in that in that time there are some stories that you can't like i think jerusalem's on in town at the moment and that's a three actor and it's incredible and and is wonderful as a wonderful piece um but i think you can tell a story in in 90 minutes and and you know everyone then goes on that wave with you rather than it being you know you stop have an ice cream and then go back into to something it's actually quite nice to um to just flow it all the way through yeah um so yeah i i, I really i really enjoy that yeah definitely lava is playing all over the place as of next week and um playing to rave reviews i've been reading all the reviews this morning it's uh i can't i can't wait to see it it's um it looks really exciting oh, casey i think you'll love it i think you'll really love it i mean i i like i say i uh, we didn't know what the reaction was going to be because it's a new play but it is it, it's a really lovely piece and i do think it leaves you thinking about lots of different things fantastic casey ainsworth it's a pleasure to speak to you thank you ever so much for thank that you. and uh, uh look forward okay. to seeing you up at theater fluid on uh, wednesday night yeah and maybe we'll, we'll maybe we'll recognize each other i'll go yeah we were on the stairs <laughs> <at> the <Royal> <laughs> <Court>. <laughs> there's You're that the guy from that workshop leaving year as me <laughs> brilliant <laughs> you take care of yourself cheers 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 bye-bye so, bye-bye
Casey Ainsworth playing up at Theatre Cluid on Wednesday evening, Wednesday the 4th of May in Love. Uh, tickets still available. Box office number up at Theatre Cluid 01352 344 101. And also, of course, Blood Brothers is in town next week. Same box office number, same place. Go on, support your local theatres, ladies and gentlemen. They won't be there forever if you don't. It's the Andy Snow Radio Show Show. It's the Andy Snow Radio Show Show. It's the Andy Snow Radio Show Show. It's the Andy Snow Radio Show Show Show.